All right, so top of the morning, we got stuff off. Um, as I explained in the last vid, uh, we're gonna rewire the whole car. I'm done, okay? I don't have time for this. It's, it's 30 years old and I've had it for 18 years. And in that time, there's so much stuff that I've added and subtracted and I just wanna get uh, this thing up to par. So we're redoing everything, freak it, okay? So with that being said, we have the Rywire PDM 14, which is the black box. Um, comes with the CAN bus keypad and uh, all the wiring, headlights, tail lights. that's all plug and play, pretty simple. So only thing we really have to hardwire on this is um, we got fuel level sending unit and then we have uh, power and ground for um, an accessory. And then uh, this is the brake switch that I have to convert um, to a different plug to fit on my custom pedal assembly. So I don't know where this is going to lead to. Um, it's already leading to swapping to the I did it steering column because that's something I've been wanting to do. And since I'm rewiring the car, I won't be using the turn signals and stuff like that on the steering wheel. So this is a good opportunity to do so. So I think we're going to do that. And then um, I'm really not too certain about the whole AC deal because that's going to kill it. Um, it's going to have to have its own power source separate from this PDM, um, which is fine. But with that being said, I now want to swap from the OEM blower setup to like a much convenient, uh, more common upgraded heater blower setup that I can just um, run like four vents, bam, and call it a day. So don't know where this is going to go, but you guys are in for it with me. So here we are. We're going to get started. Um, just cutting away. We're going to cut all the wires that's not usable in here and toss them in the damn trash can. Okay, so right now we're just ripping everything apart, getting the steering column out, getting all this fucking jazz out, and let's go to town. Um, I think I'm gonna work on the steering column first to work everything around that, but I don't know if I'm gonna pull the dash yet. I think I'm gonna pull the dashboard off real quick just to make things light and easy. So let's do it. Okay, so right now we're gonna remove the stock steering column. Here's the new one, super sturdy, should be golden. Um, First, you gotta turn the wheel a little bit, as you see there, to get to that bolt right there. Um, and then you could turn it back straight so you know you're back straight when you put this back together. And then uh, let's see about getting that off. Okay, we got the old one out. This stuff I gotta rewire, but I gotta make sure I don't lose that and what that stuff is. Um, yeah, got it going. So right now we're gonna install the steering column and see if we can get that up there, uh, which looks pretty tasky, but we'll figure it out. Let's get all this off too. Just a little looper that goes around, but let's try not to pull the dash off. I mean, I'm already there, but just these things are old. So if you don't got to, I wouldn't. If you got to, then pull it out, but I didn't plan on salvaging any of the stock harness. Um, it was so hacked up and stuff added, so I just needed to um, get rid of it. And uh, so I just was cutting away. I cut a couple things I needed, but hey, oh well, we'll figure that out. Um, but yeah, let's get this column in and let's rock and roll. Okay, right now I got it marked uh, center and I got it marked uh, the edge there. So we're going to go ahead and weld this up real quick. Started to, but had it on AC TIG and then forgot I wasn't recording. So let's get this set up and get this welded back on the car. And then we'll show you guys the final position of how I got it set up. Alrighty. There it is there. Pretty clean. Oh, focus, focus. Pretty clean. So let this cool down. Get this back in the car. This steering rack is made by I did it. Um, bro, super light. So we lost a lot of pounds today versus that um, in doing so. So let's get this on first and then we'll continue rocking. This thing's pretty good too. It, is, uh, it has this bolt. Then it uses the original one. Clamps it nice and tight so it can't go anywhere. So it should be good. Let's try it. All right, so that bitch is on, bro. You can do pull-ups on this motherfucker, bro. 
Damn, this is gangster. I like this. Look at this. Oh. Hold up. It's not like the NRG shit. I gotta get used to this motherfucker. Hold on. Let me get this on right. Bottom, bottom. Gucci. I like that big time. Super dope. And I'm in the sea, so it feels nice and good, like right here. So much more sturdier. That other one was so loose, bro. Look at that shit. Don't even move. So we good. Super dope. Love it. Let's get this closed up now. And then start back on the wiring. Had to get that done before I continued on the wiring though, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. So I did it, Colin's pretty dope. And uh, if you wanna use the blinker setup, it's actually pretty possible um, if you just made a clamp setup because the bracket uh, slides on like that anyway. So uh, it just bolts onto two tabs. So you can either put two tabs welded to this. I would obviously take the bearing and stuff apart so you don't heat them up. Um, but yeah, past that. If you wanted to use your stock blinkers and stuff but we're not using blinker um, switches because my dry wire pdm i got with the can bus pad and basically here's my turn signals so that's what we're gonna rock with um so i don't need blinkers on my on my steering column anymore so that's gonna look pretty dope but yeah let's get this in okay all right now we are rewiring um Got my handy dandy tech screws. Uh, it's kind of like a mock up. And then I could just pull this whole piece down, take it down, and bolt everything up perfect. Um, but yeah, that'll get us started. There should be room. Yeah, there's room for bolts with nuts behind it. Um, so yeah, we're getting the PDM stuff wired. I cut this with some of my original stuff, um, which was rolling anti lag, um, the Magnus the 12 volt pot switch and this one was a spare i don't know why but it wasn't hooked to nothing so we'll tie that stuff back in nice and neat i'll use a dwarf style connector um got the rest of this stuff tucked up got my c101 plug right here that just plugs right into the pdm with another the female side of this pd of that oh here it is right here so Get that plugged in two, mate the two, and then go from there. Next step will be mounting the disconnect breaker, which I don't know where the heck I put. So let me find that. Oh, that's not it. Okay, yeah, I gotta find that. And then uh, clean up some stuff. This was here for uh, my battery tender, so I gotta get that hooked back up for sure. And then go from there. Let me find the disconnect breaker though first. Okay, basically got the AM, PDM, that's all wired together. I do gotta wire in the fuel pump and stuff, but I wanna see if at least we get signal or power to the ECU. Um, and then I'll go from there as far as continuing. So got this piece of two gauge, um, this is a PG, so it is like a multi-course uh, stranded wire versus, you know, home wire that maybe have like 10 or 20 um, strains in it. This one has about 50 to 75. So the conductor is really nice. Um, that's why welders use them, obviously. Um, so just got a little elbow here mocked up. I'm going to crimp it up and then see about... Uh, Getting this on here and done. Get it powered up. Let's give it a shot. Got my key PDM uh, box here. This has my start button. So I do have a bunch of buttons that I have for no reason now. Um, rolling anti lag, all that good jazz. So figuring out how to wire that into the PDM is going to be the tricky part. Or maybe it does it through the ECU. I'm not sure. Um, but we'll find out here shortly.
Okay, so I want to get this PDM on. Um, and mind you, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, so don't think that I do, okay? We're learning just like what you guys are. Enter the password and then good to go. All right. Um, so basically, I got the PDM on and uh, it does not show that it's online. So it does say that it's offline. Okay, so if I hit the power disconnect on, um, I'm emailing Ryan from iWire as well, so he's helping me with this. Um, so, still offline. It gets a signal that it's obviously got something, but nothing. So, Ryan said, because I'm using this key keypad, and this will all be clean pretty, I mean, we're pretty clean. This is all temped in stuff. Um, but I got this keypad, which works off of Canvas. Okay. Um, and basically, you could do a master switch, start, whatever. You could set a password to where it doesn't activate till you actually um, push in a combo of buttons. So that's pretty cool. Where I'm mounting this, I don't freaking know. But we'll figure it out. Got a little drip. Um, yeah, so he said that this plug here is labeled um, switch, okay? And this would normally plug right into a toggle switch panel that you see in normal race cars. But we're not doing that, we're running the canvas. So he said I need to power up the yellow and black only. Um, so we're gonna pin a wire, crimp a wire to a pin, stab it in there, Power that up with the handy dandy tester um, via wire nut, and then see if we can get this to signal online. And if it does, we're in like Flynn. If it doesn't, then we're back to the emails. So let me get this set up real quick, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so this is my toolbox. It's, uh, oh, we need those. These are crimpers. Uh, maybe I can drop the link in the description. Um, they do 14, 16, and 18 gauge barrels. And uh, these are the pins I like to use, which I have both styles, both from Amazon, which is JR Ready. I'll drop the description for those. And they basically just have these little stab in pins. So this is super easy. The best way to crimp is George style connectors because they are waterproof and um, they're super easy. It's just too, it's brain dead. Why would you fight anything um, to do so? So they do make them in another style, which is um, the no lock style, um, which I do have as well, but just depends on what I'm doing, which one I'm using. But today, oh snap. We're going to use one of these bad boys and crimp a wire. Alrighty, so I've got the wire. Let's get it uh, stripped. Get this little piece, shove it in there. And this only goes in one way, which says which way to go in. Stab it in, and you're done. Oh shit, boys, we're on. So I powdered it up to the yellow and black, as he said, and we're on. So, let's see here. Oh shit, we're on. Let me find out what these buttons do, because I don't know. out what these do total current one amps let's figure out how to turn the headlights on because those are plugged in let's figure that out real quick so right now we swap to am infinity just to see if uh the am infinity is getting power and it is and we still have the same check engine light 
So let's go to sync and where is that at? Diagnostics. Okay, so AM Infinity is powered up. Um, you'll know there, you'll see the green, not connected. So that is good to go. So right now I'm gonna add a toggle switch um, just so I can temp in right now because I have a switch there and power this up <coughs> so I can get this temped in and I'm gonna start running the fuel pump and stuff and see if we can get this thing fired back up. So right now, wiring in the um, fuel sending unit to the um, for the AEM dash you have to use the six channel uh, can sensor module and um, the, the wire from the signal obviously goes there and then this send, sends it to the dash via canvas um, and if anyone doesn't know what canvas is it's just like a a, a, uh, a series of codes, basically, like a corruption file. Let's look at it like that, which transmits all the information um, over two wires, can high and can low. Um, so you don't have to run 455 wires over there. You could just do your thing and good to go. Again, these are the um, closed barrel terminals. Uh, you can find these on Amazon, 20 bucks, and they come with all the pins. Uh, JR Ready is the company that makes them. All this stuff you can get on Amazon, George style connector, super easy to use. I love them. Um, they make things super easy. So now I got to figure out, um, oh, actually I need all three of these. I didn't think about that till right now because I have to power this module up. Uh, this one is for the actual dash, and this one is for the, um, so I gotta hit it with power, power and uh, ground and the signal to power up the module. I almost forgot, I taped them off for some reason. I think to be safe when I was testing. But good thing I remember that right now because that would've sucked. Pretty easy. These strippers you can get from Home Depot too. These are Klein tools and they're super easy to use. Uh, some people don't like to use them, but I do. They make things super easy. Just quick, quick squeezes. If you could squeeze, you could work this. Trust me. You don't got to pay someone to come wire your stuff up. Everything comes with a schematic. Um, you know, it's all about taking your time and making sure everything's good to go. And with the right tools can't mess this up so I know for sure where's my plug I know for sure that um, this one's missing the whole back piece see if we can find another one oh, yeah, there we go. this one was missing the whole back piece Damn it. okay so I know for sure power and ground power is blue Just got a uh, continuity test um, from here, or not from here, from here to there, because they're both black in their signal and I didn't mark them. So, prime example of why you do things right the first time so you don't have to go back and do what I'm about to do right now. So, <clears throat> so this is my Klein. Uh, I am an electrician. Uh, this is a continuity voltage tester. So you see there, I got it in the pin for there and you have to unplug it from here because it reads the ground through there, so. Okay, so I found the pin. Take this one, stab it in this one, correct. Oh, are you kidding me? Okay. Well, you gotta check these really good. Are you kidding me? So stupid. There we go. Okay. Let's 
some reason that one didn't stay on. Don't know why. They're all the same size. Let me see. Tight. Okay, we're good to go. Let's see if we can power this dash up right now. And we'll be rocking. Okay, so we do got everything wired up um, past the fuel pumps. I got to wire those in. I got to reconfigure how it's all wired up. So that all changes. Um, so I'm not going to show that as far as the PDM is concerned. But we uh, did get everything done all the way to the headlights. Um, now it's just programming. Find a location for this bad boy. I kind of want it right here. Um, if it was detachable, that'd be nice, but I guess not. So trying to figure out a location for this um, and then go from there. But let's see if this all works. Breaker on. ECU is powered up. Um, let's make sure this works. Yep. So, boost target still works. Flip pages. Okay, that does not work because it's not grounded. I forgot. Jesus Christ. Okay. All right, well, let me ground that, but past that, ready to rock. See if we can get this programmed and show you guys some lights on and stuff, and then we'll close it up. All righty, let's see. Uh, switch panel here on, powered on. These are clearly pumps, uh, so I'll have to remember that. Uh, that's on. Let's see. Hazard is on there, but I'll shit. Okay, uh, we're working, we're getting it one button at a time. Um, let's see, start, stop. Okay, that works. So, yeah, let me get fuel done, and I think we're gonna start her up. All right, let's try that again. Somehow reset it when I turned it off or something. I don't know. Oh shit, bruh. We on. Something's going on with the air fuel ratio though. Oh, there it goes. Something was up there. But yeah, we got her on. So that's gonna conclude this video. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share again, man. This is good stuff coming out of the garage from a regular guy. I don't know much about much, man. YouTube, Google, it's helping us out so much. But let me show you guys the difference real quick in this shit. So this is everything that came out of the car. And this is what you can get. So pretty simple. All plug and play. A couple wires you gotta wire in, but not much. But that's what came out. This is 45 pounds of stuff. All right, we out. Um, this is basically what you get in a kit. Um, this is uh, for the CRX race car um, with me and my buddy Kanjo. So here's the black box, PDM 14. And then you just have all these sub looms. So it's pretty simple. Um, the way it wires up, there's not much to it. Um, past that, uh, it has like, so let's just show you guys, for example, 
Um, it has switch inputs, um, gauges, which goes up to your gauges. Um, obviously, the C101 20 pin connector. And then the rest of this stuff, which I'm not sure why this is on here because um, we're running AEM Infinity. So let's figure that out why that's on there. I'm not sure of that because we're not running none of that. Um, and then it just has its front looms. So you got headlights here, fan outputs, um, etc. So that's all simple stuff. And then. This one is the rear, uh, which does the fuel pumps, um, does both fuel pumps, um, fuel sending unit, uh, the tail lights, license plate lights, all that good jazz. Um, so that's the rear. And uh, yeah, that's the end of that. I don't think this goes in here. This must be for something else. Yeah, we'll get that on there when we rock. But so far, so good. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, and share. And uh, don't forget, we'll be back.